in all of those complex layers so that the reader can smell or taste the thing themselves. I also have a Twitch channel. Head on over there for more roleplay advice and other fun stuff. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about describing taste and smell. Humans are largely visual creatures, so in writing, we tend to focus on what we can see around us. But we've all seen the writing advice that says to focus on the five senses. So we're going to get into two of those senses today, taste and smell. We're going to talk about some tips in describing taste and smell in your writing. Taste and smell are linked biologically and linguistically. Words like sweet, sour, and spicy describe not only flavors, but fragrances as well. Go read a menu with dish descriptions or the description of a perfume. You'll often see the same words used in both menus and perfume descriptions, even though no one's drinking perfume, or, well, we hope not. I've linked down in the description some word lists for both flavors and fragrances to help you out with this. Smell, in particular, is strongly linked to our memories and emotions. Think about the way your childhood home smelled. When you get a whiff, you are instantly teleported back to childhood. Here's another example. Have you ever been to Disney World? Do you know what a Disney water ride smells like? If you've ever been, you will never forget the smell of Pirates of the Caribbean or Splash Mountain or other water rides at Disney. And if you smell that smell again, it unlocks those memories and feelings of being in the theme park. Food is the same way, and food is deeply cultural. What we eat says a lot about who we are and where we came from. There is nothing like mom's cooking, or a slice of pizza from your favorite pizza place, or having exactly what you want as a birthday meal. All of these things evoke powerful emotions and memories, and adding smell and taste to your writing can do the same thing for your stories. You can put in those very human experiences so that you evoke strong emotion in the reader. Because smell and taste are linked so intrinsically to memories and emotions, they're powerful symbolic tools. For example, you can indicate rain is coming by having one of your characters smell rain before something really sad happens in the narrative. If a character is about to receive flowers as a gift, maybe they smell them before they see them, and then they have all of the emotions linked with that smell. If characters are having a meal, having them comment on the flavor of the food can give the scene a certain color. Maybe a positive scene has sweet tasting food, or a negative scene the food is more sour tasting. Maybe if something in general negative is about to happen, your characters can smell something foul. Smells and tastes both have layers. A strawberry shortcake isn't just sweet, it's also light and airy, and the strawberry is tart, and the cream is delicate. Describe all of this. Describe the notes of cinnamon, or the afterflavor of pear. Describe an acrid smell as both sweet and sour. Add in all of those complex layers so that the reader can smell or taste the thing themselves. For some great descriptions that really go into detail on those layers, I recommend looking at the descriptions of wine. They go into insane amounts of detail with every possible flavor note that you might taste inside that wine. That's a treasure trove of good description writing when it comes to tastes and smells. This one is more for taste than smell, but if you're writing about food, don't forget texture. How does the food feel inside the mouth and against the tongue? Is it crunchy, soft, springy, chewy? Does it take a lot of chewing to get through or does it dissolve quickly? Is the food more solid or maybe it's liquid like a soup? Speaking of texture, temperature also plays a role too. For example, hot coffee tastes very different than iced coffee. So don't forget to mention temperature, especially if it's an outside the norm temperature of what you'd expect. So, to recap, we covered five tips for describing taste and smell in your writing. 
Use fragrance and flavor words. Evoke emotions. Use symbolism. Get complicated. And don't forget texture. So are you gonna implement some of these in your writing? Does this inspire you to write about taste and smell more? Or do you already do this? Let me know your taste and smell writing techniques down below. And don't forget, of course, as always, to make it a great day. Thank you.